Chapter 10 The second day of work began easily enough. The three waited for the truck to arrive with the roof to the bunker so they could begin to bury the shelter. The walls had been set and rebarred, so all that was left to do was set the roof and cement the two pieces together. A truck pulled up to the back gate of the property, and Vanya allowed the masons in to help lay the roof. It took all of them, Vanya, Nona, and even Katusha, as well as the crew which came from the masonry, to lift the roof with the help of a crane and set it on top of the walls. Vanya thanked the group, and him and Nona began the task of pouring concrete down the holes which let the rebar pass through them, while Katusha mixed another batch of concrete for them. When the work was done, the three began filling in the sides of the wall, leaving the top to be covered on the next day. Inside, a furnace and its chimney were installed. Since everything was done with prefabricated pieces, the only thing left to do was furnish the bunker, install the doors, and add lighting to the inside. This was done by placing dry cell battery banks within the bunker to power the lights and radio as needed. All of this was stored on shelves that held armaments, batteries, and water. Some comforts were also added for the three. Vanya smiled as Nona and Katusha added small things of comfort, such as a stuffed bear for Katusha, a comfortable seat made of down, and some books. At the end of the afternoon, the bunker was well stocked and nearly ready for use. All that was left to do was bolt the doors to the wall. Vanya sat for dinner with Katusha and Nona, and the three enjoyed Katusha's favorite dish. Though she had liked the stroganoff at the restaurant, Katusha lamented it was not as good as Nona's. Now she had the chance to eat Nona's stroganoff once more. She smiled as she scooped the pasta and meat into her mouth. It was a lovely dinner for them. Vanya happily cleared the table after dinner as Nona and Katusha went upstairs to get Katusha ready for bed, and for Nona to sing for Katusha, as she did every night. Vanya sat in the foyer and closed his eyes in bliss. He hadn't been so happy as he was now since before the war. He had somebody who understood him, a woman who was his equal, and her friend who was a pleasure to be with. In the evenings at this time, him and Nona would sit and talk together. She was such a lovely person to talk to, and the two were often lost in long talks about anything from politics to life before the war to philosophy. Vanya leaned into his seat and whispered, I wish you could be here for this, Virni. Footsteps at the threshold let Vanya know that Nona was back downstairs, and he opened his eyes to look at her as she entered the room a bit later than usual. Vanya stopped when he saw Nona standing with something in her arms. What's that, Nona? It's something I've made for you, she replied as she sat down beside him. I wasn't sure if it was something you would like, but I really hope you do. Nona, I began Vanya as she handed him the box. He opened it, and within it he found a ring and some paper. On the paper was written a letter addressed to him from Nona. Dear Vanya, I must say that you have truly captured my heart. Though I know what you have done in the past and how it has affected me, know that I never once felt anger towards you for what you've done. And from the day that I met you, I've known always that you are a good man. I have seen how you treat Katusha, and as you know, she is the most important person in the world to me. Or at least she was until you came into my life. Spending evenings with you has shown me just how much you mean to me. And I wanted to write this, all of this, out so that this moment could be immortalized between us. I hope that you say yes to my proposal. You really are the best thing that has ever happened to me. I want to be your wife, and together perhaps we could take care of Katusha. I've always seen her as my own kin. I wanted a family of my own always, and perhaps with you, I could have my own real family. My true offspring. Who knows? Regardless, what I wish to ask of you, Vanya, is, will you take my hand in marriage? Will you take the step of asking me to marry you? Vanya lowered the letter with shaky hands and looked at Nona, who stared in anticipation. I... I never thought that you... You never thought that I felt this way for you? She asked with a bit of a giggle. Her breath was shaky and her face showed how nervous she was. It was really something to behold, as the woman was usually one who could keep herself quite composed. Vanya understood the nerves it took for her to ask this, but... 
I felt this way for a while now. But you've yet to notice, so I, I thought that maybe tonight I could make it a little more obvious for you. No, no. I, I really like you too, but... But what, Vanya? She asked, her face collapsing. I... I can't. At least I don't... I don't think that I can, he said as he placed his hands on her. But... Don't you... Don't you want me? I, I, I mean, I'm young and we get along so well, don't we? I... I thought you might find me attractive. Well, yes, I do, but... Nona leaned in closer to him and whispered, Please, just let me be with you. We can take care of Katusha together. We can have such a good life. Vanya looked into her eyes and held her tighter. His mind and his heart were at conflict. Vanya fell back as he allowed Nona to kiss him. Her lips locked with his, and the two kissed deeply for a moment, until guilt overwhelmed Vanya, causing him to push her back. I, I, I can't do this, he said to Nona. What? But why not? She asked, feeling betrayed by his turn from retreat from her. Because I'm married, Nona. But, but your wife is dead. I, I, I mean no disrespect, but... Don't you think it's okay to move on from her? Maybe. But I, I made a vow, didn't I? And I can't break that vow. It just, it doesn't feel right. I love you, Nona, I really do. But I don't know if I can do this. Said Vanya, looking away from her. Nona sat still for some time and answered. I understand. Perhaps it was too forward of me to do this for you. I'm sorry. No, no, wait, said Vanya. I, I, I'm sorry. Maybe we can make this work. I just, I don't know. I don't know right now. Give me time. Maybe, maybe we could give this a chance. I just, I need more time to think on it. Nona said nothing as she left Vanya alone in the foyer. Vanya stood in his place for some time, thinking about what he had said. He truly did love Nona, a lot even. But it was all so sudden for him. He hadn't a chance to process what was happening until it had already been done. Maybe him and Nona could be together. Perhaps it'd not be against his vow, but really he did not know. He didn't want Nona to feel scorned. But he had to be sure of his feelings before doing anything with her. Or surely that would be worse than him just rejecting her. Vanya walked to the portrait of his wife and asked, What do you think? Before walking upstairs to his study and going into his room to lie down, Vanya lowered his head and prayed that night, until at last he fell asleep, not quite done pondering the question of what next to do with Nona. <laughs>